things. This is take two of this video. I don't like to do two takes. I'm like a one take kind of gal. Uh, it's take two because I full on filmed, I filmed this post lunch with, uh, and I didn't, I didn't floss. And I even thought about it. I was like, you know, you should really floss. You should really brush your teeth after that lunch. And uh, I full on had a piece of seaweed between my two front teeth for the entire video. And it looked really, really small. And it was like, I was zooming in on the photos being like, can I get away with this? Can I get away with this? And it almost just looked like I was a bit more gap tooth, gap toothed than normal. I bet I could have gotten away with it. But whatever, I decided to retake it. So it's a new day. It's so lovely. Sorry, like outside my window, there's autumn leaves drifting by. It's really, really magical. <sighs> All right, so today's topic, I, I'm, I'm worried this might be a little bit contentious or I don't really know what the response is gonna be to what I have to say about this topic, but hey, let's go there. All right, parents. Parents. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, I'm living back home with my parents now for, um, I'm not sure, the indefinite future until the world goes back to normal, until I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm living with my parents and uh, it's definitely not what I predicted. I never ever thought I would be moving back home in my adult life, but here I am. And some people, uh, you know, have been like asking me how that's going and a little bit sympathetic towards me because of it being like, Ooh, you know, living with your parents, that must be, you know, do, do you want some space? Do you need to get away from them and all of that? And even my mom, <laughs> at times has been like, you're not sick of us yet. Like, do you, you must, you must like want to stop hanging out with old people all the time. Uh, yeah, I'm not sick of them. Am I sick of them? I mean, it's like, I don't spend every waking moment with them, but I don't mind them around. And just because they're of a different generation than me and they're a bit older doesn't mean that they're less valuable as human beings or that I'm able to relate to them any less. Like, I get to learn things from them and they get to learn things from me. And it works out pretty well. Here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, just to update you, um, Mom is London isn't going to Hudson. So I may just go by myself, but you're welcome to join me. Okay, I probably won't. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Uh, it's possible I might ask you. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I'm filming something. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> gee, you mean I'm going to be on TV? Yeah, you're going to be famous. Oh. He's gonna be famous. Oh. This is my father, Stuart, and oh. he's he's just like a shadowy, scary figure in the background. Right now. <laughs> okay. 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 Jason, I'm taking Peter for a walk right now. Just around here. Okay. That's my dada. See, it's like it works. You know, they come in, we chat. We're together. We're a family. We're a unit. We're making it work in these strange times. Um, but honestly, what a nice man. <laughs> um, okay, so this this was not always our way. Yeah, um, I, I had a very difficult relationship with my parents in my early teens. And I had uh, what I would have called trust issues. There was just like growing up, 
there was a lot of volatility in the house, a lot of fighting, a lot of tension, a lot of stress in the house. And my little childhood self didn't have the nervous system to handle it. You know, there's like some kids who, uh, and my sister's like this too. And my brother's to some, as, um, to some extent, um, where they're just like not concerned with what's going on with other people. It's like, well, this is what I want or okay, I don't know, that's going on over there, but that has nothing to do with me. And she's like very able to just like, mm. I mean, at least she seems to be, of course, like we all internalize this, but she seems to kind of like not let it get to her. And me as a child, I was not that way at all. I would like full on just take on, eat up like all of the energy of everyone around me. And I'm still like that. Uh, or at least like I'm very sensitive to it. And it's been a skill that I've had to learn of kind of letting it roll off me, not taking on other people's stuff. So, but anyway, I didn't have that skill as a, as a child. And then it obviously really affected me and led into a lot of dysfunction in my teenage years. And I moved out really, um, really early. I moved out when I was about 16 years old with my boyfriend. Uh, and, and I was really proud of that fact for a really long time that I had made it on my own, that I didn't need my parents and that I'd, I was, I was doing it alone, even though what I was doing with some dude. Um, but that, that I was not under the heel of my parents and that they did nothing for me. Fast forward some years and about a year and a half ago, I was very unhappy and decided that I finally needed to, well, let's see. I had been working on myself as one does and it was about a year and a half ago that I finally took a look at my relationship with my parents and decided to bridge that gap and to, you know, stitch us back together. What really made the difference for me was finally seeing and accepting the fact that they loved me. And it's, it's really that simple. Um, I full on used to be someone who like, who didn't believe in love. I would just like get into these arguments with people around like, yeah, but what is love anyway? Like as if it was like a theoretical concept that didn't really exist. Um, and, and I, I think it was just me being hurt and, and trying to protect myself that I would like go into my head and make it this kind of philosophical discussion as, as opposed to like being honest about the fact that I used to be really, really, really loving as a child. And I felt that because of that, I got squashed all the time. So anyway, I really like cut myself off from love and I cut myself off from being a loving person. And I also cut myself off from other people being loving towards me or just other people being loving in general. And once I finally saw like and accepted that my parents loved me, then I couldn't play that game anymore. It, it served me. It like, it allowed me to justify all my resentment, all my, all my, like every problem I saw in my life, every piece of like dysfunction I saw within myself, I could blame on them because they hadn't loved me enough. And when I finally stripped that away, and what is the enough anyway? But when I finally stripped that away, then like I couldn't, I couldn't hold on to that, to that story anymore. I no longer had the like ability to be like, oh yeah. See, I know I'm I'm all kinds of dark and scary and twisty, but it's because of where I come from. That isn't to say that my parents love me perfectly, whatever that might mean, or even unconditionally. Uh, unconditional love is, it, unfortunately, it's something that most people can cannot give or do not give. And they're not even aware that they don't give it. They think, like we think that we have that down. But unconditional love is without condition. 
So what that means is no matter what that person is doing, no matter what that person looks like, no matter what that person is saying or how they're treating you or what decisions they're making in their life, you love them without condition. You love them exactly, exactly as they are. And for parents, that can be really difficult because they look at you and often they see all the things that they're either supposed to do or they're failing to do. So they're not actually seeing you and interacting with you as a human being. They're seeing themselves. Like that's that's just what we do as human beings. Everything is a projection. Everything is a projection of ourselves. So like the term like, oh, you're just projecting. Like, yeah, no, no, duh. That's that's all we're really capable of doing. And and so the more healthy way is to actually like project onto others. <laughs> like this, this is gonna sound, but like once you get in touch with like your unique expression and your, your like unique unit, and you allow yourself to be complicated and interesting and completely different, then you're also allowed to see other people as full expressions of themselves too. But it's still a projection, I think, I think. Anyway, so unconditional love is this ideal that of course, hopefully we're all striving for, but is a little bit, is difficult for a lot of people. And, and it's also not something that's present all the time. So I've definitely had moments of unconditional love. Definitely, definitely. But is it something that I'm, I'm able to like harness and, and have like, like, like a rucksack? Like, is it with me, on me, of me all the time when I'm with others? No, probably not. Pro I'm probably not always present to my unconditional love for others. And I have to continuously train myself and develop that in myself and give that to others as often as I possibly can and give it to myself as often as I can. So I probably didn't receive unconditional love from my parents, but probably a lot of people didn't. And this is the other part that uh, gets thrown around a lot, but or people seem to think that they get it, but I don't I don't know that we really, really get it, is that your parents are just people. They're just people. And one day they had you. And then all of their limitations, hey, they showed up in how they parented you. Because I don't know, they didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. Like no one really knows what they're doing. We're just figuring it out along the way. And the other part too is like, you were just a part of their life. So they had a life before you and they had like ways of being before you and they had an understanding of the world and an understanding of themselves and they had certain things that they did in accordance to however they made sense of all of this. And then you came along and they applied that way of being onto you, onto raising you. And it might not make sense to you because you have a completely different interpretation of how the world works and how you treat another human being. But for them, it did make sense. I do understand that this could be, you know, for, for it depends on, it depends on every, every person is different. And for some of you, there might be really difficult cases of abuse or neglect or, um, you know, sometimes the things that people have lived through is really, really traumatic and difficult. And I'm not excusing that behavior, but I'm saying that regardless of anything that happened, your parents still loved you and it made sense to them. For you, it might not be how you treat someone you love, but for them, it made sense. And that's really sad and disappointing.
but they're your parents. And you can't escape the fact that you are made of them. Like you grew this body imitating them. They're like in your DNA, they're seeped in. So all those years that I cut myself off from them thinking I'm not like that, all those years I pushed, pushed, pushed away. Yeah, I was just really pushing myself away because I, like, I I can't, I can't separate the two, really. And I have to disown so many parts of myself in order to do that. And when I did cut myself off, you know, like, I, I brought my relationship to them and to those aspects of myself into my life, into my choices, into my relationships. So cutting yourself off from people that you don't like or that you disagree with is never really going to, especially with your parents, it's the way in which you cut yourself off. Rejecting anything, rejecting anything that you perceive, again, this is like projection, rejecting anything that you perceive has to be rejecting yourself in some way. Because if it wasn't a part of you, you wouldn't perceive it. You wouldn't notice it. It just like, it wouldn't be there for you. You wouldn't create it in your life. The other thing that when I started to mend, oh my God, all the, all the, this is so much longer than the old video. So you don't like this video as much as you are doing it. I also started loving my parents and, and giving my love. Oh my God, so many little dings. I also started loving and loving them and valuing them and appreciating them. Whatever you give is what you receive. And so even though I was like, I didn't get this and this and this and this and this from you, why should I have to be the parent? Why should I have to be the one who gives first? Everyone just give first, give first. Give the way that you want to receive. See and value them exactly as they are. And that, that can be really difficult and trying. And you get into your head about like, oh, are they like the, just see it and value it, value it. Be like, like look for the positive in it. Look for like, it's really interesting that person does that. My dad is, um, he's uploading, he's a, he's a composer and he's uploading like all his music to YouTube and he has all these questions about like, what, sh what time, what time should I post it? And oh, what about this picture? What about, and, and he thinks so much about it. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't wanna help you with this anymore. I don't wanna talk about this anymore. But then I think, oh, it's actually so great that he pays so much attention to detail and he cares so much about music and he really wants his music to be heard and shared. Like, like I'm, I'm barely, I barely allow myself to think about those things because I'm just like, no, nah, let's just put it out there into the world. But he really wants to think everything through. And that's such a valuable trait to have. Like, I really appreciate that in a human being. And that's my dad. There's so many beeps. The, the second that I started doing that for my parents and, and like trusting them and, and taking in all of them, the more they've taken in me and seen me and appreciated and valued me. So as much as I didn't want to be the parent first or the parent first, whatever rules I had for like what the parent is supposed to do for the child, um, I took responsibility of our relationship and now I have the re relationship I want with them and it continues to grow. And again, here I am living with them and it's fine and it's fine and I'm happy. So love your parents. That's all I want to say, love them. And if they're not around anymore, you can still love them and you can still acknowledge that they loved you. Yeah, the face is still healing and I'm just doing this without makeup because, you know, skin is, skin deserves to be seen. 
it's not always gonna be perfect. I really do think though that like we should see more what real skin looks like. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, uh, but I'm still healing. I'm still on all my, my crazy protocols and things are going well. Stay sane, stay healthy. I love you. And uh, go, go call your parents.